right. I don't have like a official way that we start these, but here we go. Here we are with a, a we have a virtual session with Jen Wasner and Jen is with us here. Hello, Jen. Hi there. How's it going? It is good. Um, I already asked you this before, but where are you? Tell us where you're from. I'm in my, I'm in my beautiful home in uh, Durham, North Carolina at the moment. Uh, well, thank you for joining us. You have released Head of Roses and uh, um, we've been playing it a lot and loving it. And I wanted to come in and do this interview because I am a very big fan of everything that you've done with all your projects. And I love this one too. And um, I think that we should, you've recorded a couple of songs for us. And I think that we should play a couple songs and then we'll come out and we'll have a little conversation. We'll go into some more songs. And, that sounds um, great. I am. Um, I'm eating popcorn for dinner, so don't be offended if I. <laughs> well, you guys play the video of me performing songs. <laughs> that sounds great. Controversial opinion. I have. I'm in a group chat where we had a big discussion on is it or is it not okay to have popcorn as a meal. I am on the yes. Hard okay for me personally. Popcorn. Popcorn is definitely a meal, and nachos are a meal. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Possibly anyway. a. Possibly a favorite. I, I think there's been times where I have claimed nachos as my favorite food. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong. Do you, uh, on a popcorn topping, just before we get into, you know, um, we have a theater that that ha- that offers nutritional yeast to put on the popcorn. Mm-hmm. Um, are you familiar with this? And do you condone? I have. Um, I I like it all right. I think I might be more of like a, a purist, like butter and salt gal. Um, but I was also for a time putting a little garlic salt on there. That was an interesting twist. Okay, not very yeah. pure. I, know. <laughs> I mean, it's delicious, but um, yeah, you know, can't go wrong. I'm, however, whatever wheelie you want to pop with your snack choices, I support you. All right, well, let's pop some wheelies into- <laughs> Right into the sad, sad music that I'm about to <laughs> for you guys. <laughs> Get sad. It's sad. All right, Lily, let's mm-hmm. do it. I want to be good. And I want to mean it. Put your hands over my dark night and finally see it. My spirit is dragging. It's been sleeping enough. I remember what it feels like when it's open. Wanna wake it up. Is it 
it off if I Is it just brand new Little life in the world But the waves are too But the waves are too But the waves are too
Wonderful. That was great. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Confirmed that was in fact me. I did. <laughs> I did do that. And what a great setup too. Yeah, yeah. I was. Um, I made sure to wear the same outfit also, um, so you guys could be uh, as continuity. Close. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that was my friend Stella's house in Joshua Tree, California. I was fortunate enough to be able to spend the winter there this year, so that I didn't go totally insane. So. <laughs> It was cool. Also yeah. really interesting to hear the songs uh, stripped down to hear like they are, there's like components of them that are the same, but on the album, there's like, there's so much, which yeah. I think is like really like the joy of the album. Was it like hard to pare those down or what? Um, Some, well, I mean, it's always ch a challenge to play, um, to, to be so exposed, I would say. Um, yeah. And they're not exactly the easiest songs to play and sing uh, with just a guitar. Yeah. But it's a fun challenge. I like doing it. It's like, I think I kind of need to uh, have the, the variety um, in order to really feel like I'm, uh, like I'm not getting in, stuck in a rut with it. So yes, just the sh short answer to your question is it was very fun. <laughs> um, how, how did you start making music what is what it's like the first memory that you have of wanting to play or performing for other people it goes back man it goes deep. <laughs> i haven't really i've never really focused on much else to be honest mm. um i started playing piano when i was a really young girl i started taking piano lessons um was that your and, choice or your parents' choice? Um, it was, I think it was sort of a more like, well, you know, I guess the earliest thing I can say is that I used to sing with my mom and with my aunts and cousins, just sort of like recreationally, I guess. Um, and uh, I guess they sort of sensed that I had something of an aptitude. So they, you know, they're like, well, piano lessons. And then when I turned 12, my mom wanted to teach me a few guitar chords on her guitar. And it just kind of, you know, it snowballed from there. Um, I remember you on stage at Eau Claire Music Festival one year, and uh, it was early. It was like uh, it was for it was I, it was like a collection thing that you that you did with some other people, and uh, I remember you on stage saying something about listening to a Bob Dylan song. Do you yeah. remember this? Not at all. <laughs> I mean, I definitely have listened to many Bob Dylan songs in my life, but I have no idea what I would have been talking about. I have. No I remember. Idea. All right. T tell me if this comports at all. Okay. You were you were on stage. You're talking about listening to a Bob Dylan song. And I remember it very distinctly because because it was so like meaningful. You were you were saying how you had heard Bob Dylan talk about himself in song and you and and you were talking about him talking about him and how that was interesting and you were like and then I wanted to write songs because it's important to have representation in music and I want oh, people to know who I am that's totally something that I would say <laughs> um and I think it's potentially something that I have said I think uh I, I don't doubt it I don't doubt that your your memory is accurate I think that in general um I've often reflected on the fact that a lot of, at least initially, many of the songwriters that I was exposed to uh, at first were men. And um, and so um, it kind of like, there is usually like a light bulb moment, I feel like when, you know, I think I was, I was like, oh, I can do this too. Like the, the narrator of this story can be me and can look like me and sound like me. Um, and there are so many songs, uh, there are so many examples of men singing songs about women. Um, and I don't know, it's, it feels nice to be able to sort of like uh, contribute to the canon and, and contribute my perspective in that way. When you first started writing songs, how is it different from how you write songs now, lyrically? Well, I'd like to think I'm a better, smarter, more highly evolved human being now than I was when I was 12, but uh, who can say, really? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, the process itself is so intuitive um, that it's, it's really, it can get a little bit tricky to kind of try and break it down into the nuts and bolts because so much of it involves entering a kind of uh, creative flow state and not mm. overthinking too much what 
kind of process you're you happen to be participating in yeah. um so i don't know i mean i think uh i think in many ways it's different because i'm different but mm -hmm. in many ways it's the same process as it's always been in the same way that it is uh that it has been handed down throughout time for generations it's like you just kind of have to sort of like get to a certain place inside of yourself and then like make something out of the air you know like like yeah. create create the thing that you most want to see in, in your that you're imagining and bring it into reality and like that's a really uh that sort of weird liminal uh experience is not something that uh is very easy to articulate with with words what was the what's the first song you ever wrote christ um i don't know i honestly don't know i mean i can remember i can remember some like uh talent shows some like high school and middle school talent shows but if you ask me to try and like pull out of my memory i i guarantee you i could not do it um and i pray with every bone in my body that someone did not record <laughs> it or keep it uh in any capacity i would be i think i like i kind of just thank god like i i am like just before that point in time where like pre slightly pre-internet to the point where like my right. entire childhood is is not on instagram and so i really dodged a bullet on that one i'm pretty stoked about it because that seems I would, have liked, <laughs> I, would have, I would have liked to see it i would have liked to been there no um, no thanks <laughs> I always always better through the through the fog of of nostalgic memory as far as i'm concerned well with with y oak and flock of dimes i have also i i feel like you are in such a multitude of projects. I mean, I was on a couple, I, I went to a couple dates of the Bon Iver tour last mm -hmm. year. And, uh, um, oh, when you sang the, the background vocals, um, <laughs> that I remember, because we did like three dates, and I remember like going to the people next to me and being like, Jen Wasner <laughs> with the background vocals. <laughs> and it was like That's a moment we were waiting for how did you get involved with uh and become part of bon Iver? oh you know great question i don't really know i mean i was just kind of doing my thing just kind of moving through the world and making my music and releasing it and um i just kind of got an email one day asking to come down to sonic Ranch to work on some recordings um at that point i think there were you know probably like 50 people at Sonic Ranch. So, I, you know, who, I was just kind of like, I was, certainly wasn't going down there thinking that I would be invited to join the band as a member. Um, but apparently I was getting auditioned and I passed. So, um, <laughs> uh, but I didn't, I certainly wasn't expecting it. I think, you know, Vern was familiar with my, uh, with Flock of Dimes, the first Flock of Dimes record and was a fan of it. And through that, I think kind of knew that I was capable of multi-instrumental stuff. Um, and potentially could fill, could fit in and fill. I think everyone in that band too is like a very versatile musician and a very particular kind of musician, like a cre creative and versatile player. And so, um, yeah, it's a delight. I love, I mean, I miss it. It was, it was kind of sad to do our first round of touring and then have the entire world come to a screeching halt. Um, so yeah, hoping to get back to it someday, eventually. That tour had like a, like a Grateful Dead vibe at points. <laughs> Don't look at me, man. I, I say that it. in the best way. <laughs> I, I have nothing like, to do with it. I they were like the songs were all like different, and uh, mm -hmm. that was wild. That was a fun time. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. I do enjoy it. I hope it, I hope I get to do it again someday. And you were also on the With tour with Sylvanesso. Are you I, you're uh, homies with them? You live mm -hmm. in the same city. Do you do. see them often? I, every day. <laughs> Probably pretty much almost every day for the past year and a half. Cause really? we, uh, oh yeah, we potted together for the whole pandemic just to try and see some other human beings uh, in the flesh. And, um, and yeah, and I made, obviously I made Head of Roses with Nick who co-produced it with me uh, at their studio, um, which is just a few minutes from my house here in North Carolina. Um, so I see them quite often and yeah, it's really fun to play in that band too. It, that's a really killer group of players. Like, just so many absolute shredders in the mix there. And um, I get to sort of do the thing, particularly with their music, because it is, it is like in many ways, like dance music, it's like, it's like latched to the grid, but it's yeah. also, but like, so I get to sort of do my like human metronome thing, which is really fun for me. Like me and Matt, who also plays in Bonnie Bear with me are like, 
rhythm section buddies and we get to really like sync up our heartbeats with with that band it's really fun that is very sweet um and this album has so much how much did um uh, like nick and being in there contribute to like the overall sound of this record because there is like there's so many sounds on this record I which is like it's everything that I've wanted I was telling my friends this year I was like I've only wanted to listen to things that are soft and precious and delicate and Mm -hmm. full and this is like all of those things um how do the sounds on this record happen well I mean uh I don't know anyone who's who pays as much attention to really zeroing in on and perfecting sound and sounds individually and soundscapes like Nick. He has a real knack for it, a real incredible ear for it. Um, And I think I have a lot of, I I know I have a lot of like very specific uh, ideas about how I want my music to sound as someone who's like self-produced a lot of my music for most of my life. Um, But I also, as someone who's sort of like constantly trying to take in the bigger picture and move uh, as quickly as possible from part to part, you know, cause when I'm making records, I'm usually just like running around grabbing things and being like, but this, and then also this. Um, <laughs> and Nick has a real um, ability to, to, to have a certain like level of patience with the process to not like, cause I want to, I want to sketch everything out as quickly as possible. And then sometimes I need help kind of being like, like focusing in on the details and making sure that um, everything is exactly the way it needs to be and coexisting in a way that coalesces. And um, and so it's really helpful to have that, someone who's just like really paying attention to that while I'm spinning out in like idea world. Um, yeah. And he just, yeah, he has an incredible knack. I mean, he's he's one of those rare musicians where um, he, he has the like math brain, like he knows how to make all the machines talk to each other, which yeah. I can do, but I like hate it. You know, like I'll like pour over a manual and feel like none of it went into my brain and it's like excruciating. Yeah. And for him, he's like a real snack for like that side of it. Um, but he also has a knack for like the poetry of music and he's a good player. So it's like, he's kind of got like a very, a very, um, useful and, and rare skill set as a producer for sure. And he's also just one of the nicest human beings oh. uh, in existence. <laughs> You'll never and and uh yeah Wisconsin born yeah. and raised. Uh what? they make used a lot to, of nice folks up there. Used to deliver pizzas at a Domino's in Milwaukee here. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. He's a um, Milwaukee boy. He is. He is. Um he he is um well watching him play he's very good at like connecting the dots and making you know analog sounds happen. The, all of the sounds on this record, how are they made? Those like the, all those individual hmm. components are those, uh, is that is that you and Nick, you know, connecting a neon, you know, uh, chord to uh, something else or is that a natural <laughs> sound or what? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some modular stuff on there if that's what you mean. Uh, I mean, it's all different, right? So like, you know, I just, I, okay, so, the first chunk of time Nick and I hold up together and we made these sort of like highly produced demos. A lot of my writing happens uh, while I'm also recording in the demo phase. Mm. So, mm. Um, you know, I'll, I'll often bring something that's pretty well arranged and fleshed out. So I've just done, I've just kind of played everything myself and, but it sounds bad because I'm impatient. Um, and because my music room is a small, low ceilinged um, wood floored room, it's like impossible to make drums sound good in there. You can't, there's no way. Sure. Um, So like I'll bring things and then we kind of like zero in on like the arrangements, but not necessarily like getting the sounds exactly right. Yeah. Then I brought um, Matt McCon, who like I said, is my rhythm section buddy and uh, Meg Duffy, um, who has a band called Hand Habits. um, And they came and they sort of like me and Meg and Matt and Nick kind of like did some basics together in a room. Then they went home and Nick and I took all of that. And then that was when we started getting really granular with like the actual like sounds and um, specific balance of things. Um, Nick is definitely like a synthesis wizard and he, he he's particularly adept with um, playing his modular rig. I have a little bit of experience with that, but not as much as him. I know there's a lot of like, there's a lot of a few things, pieces of gear on there. Um, his, um, the Morphogene, which I use constantly to uh, make noise Morphogene was like a big part of like a lot of the 
vocal processing. Um, I use the Moog Matriarch uh, almost exclusively actually for like a lot of the synth uh, stuff in the record. Um, yeah, there's like, I mean, it's like we, he is a, we both love toys. So there's like, there's a million, <laughs> there's a million different things that I could rattle off, but it would be boring to the vast majority of people. So I'll stop. <laughs> well, I, it's, a, it's amazing how much you have in there and how it all works together and doesn't sound busy. You know, it, you. it easily could. Um, I, have one I have one lyrical question and I have one question from the audience. Cool. Um, walking is one of my favorite. You have that line, put the fingers in the mouth. That is like <laughs> so... Mm -hmm visual you mm -hmm. know and just like so sticks out and there's also the line uh you know we're dead in the water we're just walking to walk and mm -hmm. I, I i i wonder what you wrote that about or what what is that meaning there well that song is about a very specific day mm. with a very specific group of people mm. um but it's also this is a cool thing about songs is that uh, if you're doing it right, you can write about a very specific experience that also acts as a metaphor for uh, a larger concept. So in addition to being something that is like about a memory and a day that I spent, um, it is also kind of a metaphor for the, the, um, the unfolding, like the progress of a relationship in time. And so when you, when you listen to the song, the first verses are these sort of like um, moments of recognition, moments of connection, these like little sparks. Um, that line that you mentioned is like legitimately just like intended to be like an innuendo. Like it's sort of like a, it's like a, it's a curiosity about another person before you know them. But then as the song unfolds in the third, I believe, verse, um, there's you know it gets starts to get more complicated and um, there's like missed signals and confusion. And then it sort of, of course, ends with the alone again. My time is, it is my own again. So it's sort of like, it's the duration of a, of a walk, a single walk and a single day in time, but it's also like the duration of an entire relationship from start to finish. That is wonderful and brilliant. Thank uh, you. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and I wanna, I wanna take one, uh, we, we asked the audience for some questions and uh, uh, I think maybe the most fun one to end on would be, um, and I, I'm sorry whoever asked this, the names got cut off when I printed it, but um, someone asked, if you could meet any artist past or present, who would that artist be? Ooh, that's a tricky one. I mean, um, See, the reason why this is tricky is because I'm actually terrified to meet <laughs> the people I admire <laughs> because we're all so human uh, and fallible True. True. that if, if you catch someone on an off day and an off moment and that's your whole experience with them, um, it can really put a, a, a quite the spin on your relationship to their art moving forward. So I try to avoid meeting my heroes at all costs. Um, I feel like no good can can come of this. Um, but with that said, um, I don't know, two artists that pop into mind that are like, have been really major touchstones for me in my life are Joni Mitchell and Neil Young. Um, I don't want to meet either of them because I'm just, I, it's too much pressure. No good can come of this. But, um, but in some fantasy world where I could guarantee where we were just people hanging out in a room, I feel like that'd be pretty fun hang. In your, uh, in your, fantasy world of meeting Joni Mitchell, what do you do together? <laughs> Probably sing songs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, um, she wrote the song Amelia, which is one of my favorite songs of all time. And um, it has a verse that says, maybe I've never really loved. I guess that is the truth. I've spent my whole life in clouds at icy altitudes. And um I feel like I've never been so seen by a, 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 a piece of music or a collection of words. And yeah. I'd probably ask her about that. I'd probably ask her about that song and what her life was like when she was writing it. Although I honestly, I'd rather almost not know because it's, then it gets to be precious to me. And the beautiful thing about songs is that like when, it's done, when they're done well, you leave space for someone else mm -hmm. inside of them. So it's not mm -hmm. just about you, it's about the space that you create for someone else to inhabit their own experience, understand it a little better and feel their own feelings. So I don't know, 
that's my like I know that's like a fun pithy question and I could uh, probably an overly thoughtful answer but sorry that's kind of my it's kind of my vibe. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was it was beautiful thank you um great um let's go on to the last two songs by all means I'll just be here with my popcorn I hope everyone enjoys this is a song about losing yourself in another person Thank you. 
thing halfway down my throat So does my carry forward If the station is remote Hope is still keeping my head up to the moment before I Jen, thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. It was <laughs> no. wonderful. My pleasure. It was, it was uh, yeah, it was, it was really easy. I just sat here. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing the progression of the log burn. Mm -hmm. in yeah. Videos. Quite, um, quite a feat yeah. there. It's a real uh, fire. It's 100%, not CGI. Yeah, that's 100% real. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, thank you, everybody, for, for coming. This has been a session with Flock of Dimes, Jen Wozner. Thank you, everybody.